Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about Speller, the problem set 5 of CS50. So, if you want to get the solution to this problem or other problems that you might want to know, check the description below, okay? So, in Speller, we're going to spell check a file after loading a dictionary of words from disk into memory. So, we're going to basically check the words that we're going to receive in a text and we're going to check if they're spelled right, all right? So, let's see how it's going to work. Basically, here, when you download the source file, you're going to get a lot of files in here, okay? So we're going to have a dictionaries directory where we're going to have some a small and a large dictionary. We have the keys here, okay? So this is the text that we're going to read. And sorry, the keys and we, we have the text here that we, we're going to read, okay? So we're not going to work with the other files that we have in here. We're just going to work with the dictionary.c, okay? So let's understand all the functions we're going to do. And meanwhile, we're going to start building the code. Okay, so let's see how the load function works. So the load function is responsible for taking a dictionary and loading it into a hash table, okay? So if we take a look in here, it's a boolean function, all right? So we're gonna return true or false, depending on the case. So we're gonna load the dictionary into memory and we're gonna return true if, it's, if it is successful or false otherwise, okay? And like I said, we are receiving here the dictionary and we're gonna work with this, okay? So if you take a look at the walkthrough of CS 50 we have some steps that we have to do in here so basically we have to open the dictionary file then we have to read strings from file one at a time so these strings are going to be the words uh, then we're going to create a new node for each word then hash word to obtain a hash value and finally insert node into hash table at that location so let's understand each step at a time while we are coding okay so let's understand the part of open a dictionary file when we open up the dictionary file and store all of the words in memory, we're going to store them all inside of a hash table. A hash table is basically an array of linked lists. The way we determine which of those linked lists we're going to insert a word into is based on a hash function, a function that, in this case, is going to take a word as input and the output is going to be the number corresponding to which bucket to start the word in. In our case, which letters that word starts with. So, for example, if we have the word banana, we're going to put this word in the bucket of letter B, all right? So, like I said, we're gonna use the pseudocode of CS50 walkthrough, okay? And if we take a look in here for the op dictionary file, they tell us that we have to use the F open to open up the file, and then we have to check if the return value is no. If it's no, we're gonna return false. This means that we, we wasn't able to open up the file, otherwise we can continue with the code. So, I already, I already put these comments here, okay? So, let's start coding. So, the first thing to open up a file I'm gonna create here a variable that has type file and I'm gonna call like file dict file I don't know and we're gonna use the f open function all right and the f open function has two arguments the first one is which file we're gonna read and the second one we're gonna tell if we're gonna read or write in this case we just want to read so we're gonna use the letter r so the name of the variable that is storing the dictionary is dictionary and here we're gonna use r okay then we have to check if return value is no so we're gonna check if the dict file uh, is no or not so dict file equals equals no if it is we're gonna return false okay so for this first step we're done let's do the next one now let's do the second step so read strings from file how are we gonna do this so basically cs50 give us here uh, the suggestion of using fscanf all right so fscanf has three arguments file the percent as that means string and another one that has name word okay and we're gonna use fscanf until it return so fscanf will return eof once it reaches end of the file so we're gonna use this eof f just to know when we reach the end of the file all right so basically i put this in here and what are we gonna do so read strings from file one at a time okay so since we want to read strings from file one at a time 
let's use this while loop. So while what? While fscanf is different than eof because eof means that we finish the function. Okay. So fscanf. Oops. fscanf. Here we're gonna give the name of our dictionary. So dict file. Then we're gonna use the percent s and we need to put a variable here this variable that we're going to use in here is the one that we're going to store the information of what uh, in every iteration this variable will have this name okay so for each part we're going to get this in here we're going to create a, uh, a variable that's type char and i'm going to call this str okay and the str we're going to have length so length here we're gonna get this structure of the word okay because we want to know what is the size of the word so we're gonna use length plus one y plus one because every string in the end we have the no operator in the end don't, don't forget about this okay and we're gonna use this str in here all right so while this scanf is different than eof so this means that we didn't reach the end of the file we're gonna do a while loop okay so this is it for now now let's see the third step each index inside of the hash table is going to be a linked list a linked list is a way of storing data that consists of nodes, where every node has a value as well as a pointer to the next node. In our case, our node will contain a word and a pointer to the next node. So now we're going to create a new node, okay? So basically the walkthrough tells us to use malloc, that it's allocating memory, alright, for the node. Remember to check if return value is null and copy word into node using a string copy, okay? So I already put here again the steps we're going to do. So basically we to create a new node for each word. We have to first use malloc. So here we're going to use the, the type of our variable will be the type node. Okay, because now we're creating the first node. So we're going to use node here. Let me see here. Node star because it's, uh, it's, it's this is the type of our our variable i'm gonna call temp you can call the the way that you prefer all right and now we're gonna use malloc so basically malloc we're gonna say malloc this is the name of the function and we're gonna say that we want to allocate memory in the size of the node because node here it's a uh, it's a struct okay that cs50 created for us so we're gonna use this like we already saw in the previous video then we have to check if it's no so we're gonna do if node oh, sorry if temp equals equals no this means that we're gonna return false okay and then we're gonna copy the word into node using string copy so how are we gonna do this if we take a look here at cs50 manual pages we see that string copy copy a string all right and here we have two parameters the first parameter is the destination and the second parameter is the source so where we want to insert this the word we want to insert in our let me do here so string copy we want to insert here our the destination is our word in our temp so how can we access the property word in our temp variable so since this is a struct of the node to access the word we have to use that arrow notation okay so temp arrow word we're gonna insert in here and the source it's our string okay because the string is the one the variable we're using to iterate here okay so this is it for the string copy let's see the next step so now the next part is to use the hash function so let's see here what they tell us use the hash function uh, function takes a string and returns an index so we already have a hash function here okay in the future we're going to improve this hash function like it said in here but not right now so our the only goal we have to do in here is create a variable and store the value that this variable will return to us all right so like we can see here the function takes a string and returns an index so what are we going to do we're going to create a variable here like int hash num and we're going to call the function that has name hash and we're going to pass the the word so the word is stored in string okay so this is the only step we're going to do for this part 
Now let's see how we're going to insert a new node in our linked list. To insert a new node in our hash table, we need to be sure that we're setting our pointers in the correct order. Let's take a look at this example. We're going to add a new node in front of the linked list that has as the first element the node called bat. To add the new node without losing access to all the linked lists for letter B, we're going to make our node blue point to bat, and then we can change the header to point to blue. So now that we understand how can we insert, let's do step by step in here in coding, okay? So I already put the pseudocode that we're gonna do and we're gonna start implementing. So basically, what are we gonna do? We first need to check if our linked list already has any item in there, all right? So if the header of this linked list is pointing to no, this means that we have no item. So if this happens, we're gonna, our temp variable will be the first one. Otherwise, if it's not pointing to no, this means that we already have items in there and then we're gonna uh, add the node in the temp in front of our linked list, okay? And in the end, later, we're gonna point the header to temp, all right? We're gonna do this cycle that we saw in the animation. And finally, we have to close the file and return true, okay? So let's do step by step. So basically, we're gonna check if the head is pointing to no. So how can we access the heading? We're gonna do if, and where is the heading? So heading is basically the table. So here, if you scroll up, we already have our table, our hash table that has named table, and has 26 buckets, all right? Why 26? Because it's for each letter in the alphabet, okay? So we're gonna see the, the table on position the hash number is the header of our linked list. Okay, so this is how we're gonna check if it's pointing to no or not. So table on position hash num, okay, this variable that we just created, is equals to no. So like I said, this means that we have anything inside our, uh, our linked list is empty so far, okay? So to fix this, so we're gonna add the first item in our linked list. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do temp. And how can we access the property next in our node structure? We're gonna use the arrow notation next, okay? So we're gonna say that temp arrow next is pointing to no, okay? Otherwise, if the it wasn't, we're gonna see in the future, don't worry. <laughs> so we're gonna point temp to no, all right? Otherwise, so we're gonna do here an else. Otherwise, we're going to point temp to the first node of the linked list. So how can we do this? Like we saw in the video, we're going to do the following. We're going to point temp, so use the property next. And we're going to point to where the hash, the table on position hash num is pointing. Because this is the header. The header is pointing to the first element. So when we say that temp next is equal to table hash num, this means that we're gonna point to the first element. Alright? So we're gonna say table hash num. Okay? And then, like I said, in the end of these two operations, even if, if we are in the if or in the else, even if the, li the linked list is empty or not, we have to point the header to the temp. So how are we going to do this? We're going to say table on position. Sorry, I was using here parentheses, but it should be curly bracket, all right? Because curly bracket is the one that we use to assign the position. All right, let me just have a quick fix in here. So we're gonna say table on position hash num will be equals to temp. Okay, so now our hash num is pointing to temp. Finally, what are we gonna do? So like I said here, we're going to close the file. So we're gonna do F close. And we're just gonna close the file after we loop through all the words we have in our file. Okay, so this is outside the while loop. And here the name of the file is dict file. And since we were successful in loading the dictionary, we're gonna return true, not false, okay? 
So to the size function, we need to return the number of words in dictionary that are loaded, if loaded, all right, else zero if not yet loaded, okay? So to do this, we can do it in multiple ways, but the way that CS50 suggests us to do is we can keep track of how many words we already, we already read while we're doing our while we are loading the dictionary okay so i'm gonna create here a variable that has name count word plus equals one okay and this will be a global variable so here in the top we're gonna create another one okay so const unsigned int count word equals to zero okay and why zero because like it said in here if uh in here if it's not loaded, it's going to return a zero. So we are already defining it as zero. Otherwise, in every iteration, oops, in every iteration in our load function, we're going to add one to our count word. Okay? So this is it for the. Oh, sorry, this is not it. So now instead of returning zero, we're going to return here count word. Okay? So this is it for size. Now let's do the check function. So now for the check function, we're going to check if the word is in the dictionary or not, all right? So is in here, we can see that it's a boolean function, so it's going to return true or false. And we're going to reserve the word as input, okay? So let's see what the walkthrough of CS50 tell us to do. So we're, gonna, we're going to hash word to obtain a hash value, access linked list at that index in the hash table, and traverse linked list looking for the word using strk's compare, all right, to compare the, the variables. So let's just start working with this hash word to obtain the value, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do here, we're gonna get the, we're gonna create a variable, all right? So it's going to be hash num. And we're gonna check the index, so we're gonna call the function hash and we're gonna pass the variable word, okay? So now, to understand how we're gonna do the next steps, let's see the following. Let's take a look at this example to understand how we can traverse a linked list. In this case, the head is a variable that is a pointer to the first element in the linked list, the word bet. To traverse the list, we can set up a variable called cursor, which initially is a pointer to the first element in the linked list. Then we can check if this word is the one that we're looking for. If it is not the one, we can take the cursor and move it to the next node in the linked list. We can repeat this process over and over again, and if at the end of the linked list we don't find the word, this means that the word does not exist yet. But how can we represent the end of the list? We know that the last node will be pointing to no. So we know that once the cursor is equal to no, we reach the end of the linked list. So let's try to put everything we saw in code, okay? So first, let's create a cursor variable that will be pointing to the head, all right? And remember that the head of the linked list is the table on position hash num, okay? So here we're gonna do a node cursor, and remember we need to use the uh, star, is equals to a table on position hash num, okay? Then we're gonna loop until the end of the linked list. So like we saw, we know that the end of the linked list is when cursor is equal, the cursor next is equal to no. So this is what we're gonna see, okay? So cursor, sorry, not cursor next, because cursor is a pointer. So while cursor is different, oops, different than no, Okay, what are we gonna do here? So I'm gonna open up the curly bracket and I'm gonna put these two comments inside. Okay, so what are we gonna do in here? So basically, we're gonna check if the words are the same. So like it said in Speller, uh, we have to use the function string case comp, all right? So compared to strings in ignoring the case, so it's case insensitive. Basically, we're gonna pass two strings, all right? And if they are the same, it's going to return the number zero, okay? So we're gonna check if this function is returning a zero. If it is, this means that we found out the word, all right? And we can return true. Otherwise, we're gonna move the cursor to the next node, okay? So we're gonna say if a string case comp oops comp and we're gonna pass the two parameters so the first parameter is cursor and to access the word we're gonna use arrow word 
and we're going to compare with the variable word that we are receiving in the function. If this function returns us zero, this means that we found the word and we can return true, okay? Otherwise, like it said in here, we have to move the cursor to the next node. So our cursor will be equals to cursor next, okay? This is the notation to say to go to the, the next item in the linked list. Okay, so this is it for the check. Now let's do the, the last function for speller. So, like I said, let's do unload. So, unload, uh, we're gonna unload the dictionary from memory, returning true if success, else false. So, uh, like we already know, this is a boolean, okay? And our idea is basically freeing all the linked list and all the hash table from our memory, okay? So, to do this, let's understand how it works and then we can put this on code. We're going to iterate over our hash table, going over each of those individual linked lists and calling free on all of the nodes inside of those linked lists. Let's take a look at this example. We have a linked list that represents the bucket for the letter B. We can have a variable called cursor, which is set equals to the node bet, and another variable temp, which will be equals to cursor. In order to avoid losing track of the rest of the linked list, we're going to move the cursor to the next item in the linked list. Then, we can free the variable temp, which will free the first item in the linked list. After that, we can do the same process again, set temp equals cursor, move cursor to the next item and free temp. Once cursor reaches no, we know that we already freed up all the linked lists. We're going to repeat that process for every one of the linked lists that we have in our hash table. So we're gonna basically repeat this 26 times. So like I said, we're gonna repeat the process 26 times because this means all the letters we have in the alphabet and all the rows we have in our table. So basically we're gonna stop doing the following. We're going to do a loop, so for int i equals to zero, i less than n, and y n, n is 26, i plus plus, so this means we're going to do a loop through all the linked lists we have in here, and we're gonna check if the linked list is already uh, no or not, all right? So we're gonna check if uh, table on position i is different than no, so this means that we have a linked list in there, we're going to free the memory. So to free the memory, we're gonna create another function, all right? So right now, let's just call this function like free node. And we're gonna pass as argument the table on position k, i, sorry, the table position i, okay? And in the end of this function, we can return true because this means that we finished the process, all right? Now let's try to do the free node function. Now we are working with the linked list itself, okay? So we have here the function free node and we're passing a node n, let's suppose the letter n in here. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna check if the node n is different than no. So if it isn't, we're gonna call the function again. This will be recursive, all right? Otherwise, if we reach the, the end of the linked list, we're gonna start freeing. So what is the idea? We're gonna loop through until the end of the linked list and we're gonna start removing, okay? This is basically the idea. We're gonna use recursion, okay? So if uh, n in the property next is different than no, we're going to call the function again, free node, and we're gonna pass n on position next, so we're gonna pass the next property, okay? When we reach the base case in our recursion, we always need to, be, to reach the base case, we're gonna have the free n, all right? So we are freeing the memory in here, okay? So I just ran my code, all right? We just finished the project. So some things I need to say because I tested and it was some things wrong, okay? so. First, we need to import all of these libraries, all right? Otherwise, we have we may have a problem when we are compiling because this, these libraries are necessary for the, those things that we use in our code, okay? Another thing here is that I'm using an int, all right? Not this this word thing that I, I, that I wrote before, okay? Let's see the next part. Here, we have to use double quotation mark, all right? Otherwise, it might complain. And 
Uh, here I miswrote length, all right, so it's this way that we write length. I, I think this was the issues that I have, just some things that I forgot. And then, when I run my code, I get here the words misspelled in dictionary, in text, and the time I spent. To improve, to optimize your, your the time it's going to spend here, you have to improve your hash function, all right? I'm using the regular hash function that we have that CS50 already gives to us in the distribution code, but I highly recommend you to try it out, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this content and see you in the next video. If you like, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>